If you recently had a baby and you're having bleeding or pain, it can be hard to know what's okay or how much is too much, especially if it's your first. Today, we're going to go over when to call your healthcare provider during the initial postpartum period. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom. And I just had my second baby about five weeks ago. I had a really bad labial laceration or tear in my labia, which I covered in this video. I'll link it here in case you missed it. And I did continue to have a lot of pain. So I ended up calling my OBGYN earlier this week. As always, if you're concerned, you should call your healthcare provider. Part of the reason I chose to call mine was not just because of the pain, but because I started to have bright red bleeding again. My vaginal bleeding had completely stopped, and this bleeding was definitely coming from the laceration, which I know is not normal at four weeks postpartum. She and I both wanted to make sure there wasn't any type of infection or anything to be worried about, so I did go in for a visit just so she could take a look at it. Fortunately, there were no signs of infection. It's just taking a really long time to heal. Unfortunately, the labia are not as forgiving as the vagina and labial tears tend to heal really kind of unevenly or even with a split in them. And it seems like that's what mine is doing. She did offer to take me back to the operating room to fix it. However, since we're planning to have hopefully at least one more baby, we have four embryos frozen if I give birth vaginally again, there's a good chance that I'll just tear in that spot again. Even though I'm still having pain, the pain is getting better, so I don't want to monkey around with it and have it start hurting really bad all over again. As a general rule of thumb, your pain should be progressively getting better as you recover. When I discharge patients from the hospital, usually on day two postpartum, I usually tell them your pain shouldn't be worse than it is today. Sometimes with lacerations, as numbing medication wears off and as swelling gets worse, the pain can be pretty significant, but after the first week or so, it should be progressively getting better. The same goes for uterine cramping. Especially if it's not your first baby, the cramping after birth can be really, really bad. I've been telling patients that for years, but getting to experience it firsthand this time around was a whole different ballgame. I felt like ibuprofen barely touched my pain during the first like two to three days postpartum, and for me at least, Aleve or naproxen worked a lot better. However, if you are having cramping that's getting progressively worse and worse, especially if it's accompanied by tenderness when you press on your belly, that is not okay and that is definitely a reason to call your healthcare provider. You may also want to call if you're having really foul smelling discharge or if you're spiking a fever over 100.4. Vaginal bleeding usually resolves by six weeks postpartum, though I find sometimes also if it's not your first baby, up to eight weeks can be normal. It should be getting progressively lighter, but it's not uncommon for bleeding to get lighter and then heavier, especially if you start doing more around the house or going for walks, a lot of times your bleeding will increase. The first few days postpartum, if you've been sitting in bed for a while and you get up to pee, since the blood pools at the back of your vagina, a lot of times you'll have an initial gush of bleeding or even like a golf ball sized clot, but it should taper off after that. If you're continuing to have clots, especially if they're bigger than a lemon, that is a reason to call your healthcare provider as well. Other red flags would be the worst headache of your life or just the feeling that something is not right. It is okay to call your healthcare provider in the middle of the night. There is someone from their office on call at all times, and that is what they get paid to do. We would always rather take a call in the middle of the night and have it be nothing rather than get a call from a panicked nurse and have to fly into the hospital for an emergency. Please give a thumbs up if you found the information that you needed in this video and also to help push it to other mamas who might need it as well. We started watching the home birth footage this last week and oh boy, is it a trip watching yourself uh, bellow through contractions. <laughs> it is going to take a few weeks to edit, so make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss that upload if you're interested in seeing a midwife give birth at home. In the meantime, I'm going to start a breastfeeding series, just how to prepare yourself for success breastfeeding, ways to address challenges breastfeeding. I was just going to do one video, but there is so much to talk about. I think it's going to take at least three or four. I'm going to try to get August to bed now. Thank you so much for watching.